synaptic potentials are the incoming signals to the neuron. When the neuron is depolarized to threshold, it generates an action potential. The action potential is the outgoing signal of the neuron. Your goals for learning are to review the characteristics of the action potential, to learn that synaptic potentials are small, variable in amplitude, and decay with distance, to understand that synaptic potentials summate, to know the difference between temporal and spatial summation. Here's what you need to know. How electrical signals are recorded in neurons, what threshold means. To see definitions of terms, click the bold red words. Recall that action potentials are all or none events. For a given cell, the action potential has the same amplitude and duration as it travels along the axon. Because the action potential is always the same, it is the signature of the cell. Click the axon hillock of this neuron to see its action potential. The action potential can travel for long distances because it does not decay and is regenerated continuously as it moves along the axon. Synaptic potentials are considerably smaller than action potentials. Excitatory postsynaptic potentials depolarize neurons. Click the neuron to see an EPSP recorded directly beneath the synapse in the postsynaptic cell. Inhibitory postsynaptic potentials hyperpolarize neurons. Click the neuron to see an IPSP recorded directly beneath the synapse in the postsynaptic cell. The amplitude of a synaptic potential varies and is related to the number of synaptic vesicles releasing neurotransmitter. The number of vesicles releasing neurotransmitter in turn is related to the amount of calcium that enters the presynaptic terminal. Click the presynaptic axon to observe a normal EPSP recorded directly beneath the synapse. In some neurons, rapid firing of action potentials allows more calcium to enter the terminal. This causes enhanced postsynaptic potentials or potentiation for a period of time. Click the presynaptic axon to observe an enhanced EPSP. Signaling at an axoaxonic synapse can decrease the entry of calcium into the presynaptic terminal. This event, called presynaptic inhibition, decreases the amplitude of a subsequent postsynaptic potential. Click the original presynaptic axon to observe presynaptic inhibition. When the amount of calcium entering the presynaptic terminal is altered, the synaptic potential may be enhanced or weakened. Because they vary in amplitude, synaptic potentials are called graded potentials. Synaptic potentials are largest at the synapse where they originate. Synaptic potentials decay as they travel away from the synapse. Click the synapse to observe an EPSP in the postsynaptic cell. Unlike the action potential, the synaptic potential can only travel for short distances because it decays as it moves along the neuronal membrane. This effect is true for both excitatory postsynaptic potentials and inhibitory postsynaptic potentials.
A single action potential in a presynaptic cell leads to an excitatory postsynaptic potential, which is too small to depolarize a neuron to threshold. The neuron can summate or add excitatory postsynaptic potentials to produce a greater depolarization. Click the presynaptic axon to see one EPSP. Click the presynaptic axon to see summation of multiple EPSPs at the same site. This is an example of temporal summation. Several action potentials are delivered along the same axon but staggered in time. Click the presynaptic axon again to see what must occur for depolarization to be great enough to produce an action potential in the postsynaptic neuron. Excitatory postsynaptic potentials from synapses at different sites also summate. This process is an example of spatial summation. Click a presynaptic axon to see how the activity of synapses at different sites can produce an action potential in the postsynaptic neuron. Many excitatory postsynaptic potentials are required to depolarize a neuron to threshold. Like excitatory postsynaptic potentials, inhibitory postsynaptic potentials also summate. The overall effect of inhibitory activity is to keep the membrane potential below threshold thus preventing the postsynaptic cell from generating an action potential. Click the axon to see a single IPSP. Click the SOMA to see summation of IPSPs. Inhibitory postsynaptic potentials and excitatory postsynaptic potentials also summate with each other. When inhibitory potentials are added to excitatory potentials, they reduce the magnitude of the excitatory postsynaptic potentials. Click the cell soma to see this effect recorded near the center of the neuron. Inhibitory synaptic activity cancels the effects of excitatory activity and can prevent the postsynaptic cell from generating an action potential. Excitatory activity must travel from the synapse across the cell body to depolarize a neuron to threshold. The closer a synapse is to the trigger zone or axon hillock, the greater the effectiveness of that synapse. In the brain, inhibitory synapses are often located on the cell body where they can have the most powerful effect. Neurons are like democracies. Like thousands of voters, the synapses signal their I or nay votes and the neuron counts them all. If the I votes prevail, the neuron generates the action potential. If the nay votes prevail, the neuron remains silent. Click the synapses to see this action. I, 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 nay. Click the soma to see a different outcome. I, 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 nay, nay. The process by which a neuron tallies the votes is called cellular integration. This process goes on continually as neurons determine whether or not to produce action potentials. This neuronal activity is very similar to the fundamental activity of the whole nervous system. The integrative activity of the nervous system selects one output from all the competing alternatives. Click the student to see the whole nervous system at work.
Here's a summary of what we've covered. Synaptic potentials are small, graded, short-distance signals. Many excitatory postsynaptic potentials are needed to depolarize a cell to threshold. Inhibitory postsynaptic potentials reduce the magnitude of excitatory postsynaptic potentials. The job of the cell, like the job of the whole nervous system, is to select a single output from many competing inputs. To access cross-references for this topic in your Benjamin Cummings textbook, click here. To test your knowledge, click the quiz button to go to the self-quiz.